What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. That's H-A-W-G sports.com. A lot to unpack on the show as we get you ready for fall camp. This is our fall camp primer, and we're going to have Danny West join us to talk a little bit about recruiting and also discuss a little bit with fall camp. We've got a big special offer you're not going to want to miss. New forums coming at hogsports.com. All that and more on Hogsports Live. Okay, before we get started, I want to go ahead and encourage you to get your questions in. Danny West is going to come in and, and answer some of your questions on recruiting. I'll answer some of them, too, about fall camp. And I want to remind you to like, share, follow, and comment. Throw a thumbs up if you like the video. There's plenty of ways to watch and listen right now on hogsports.com. You can listen on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, be sure to throw us five stars in a review. Helps us get our message out there. If you're watching on YouTube, throw us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notifications bell so you're alerted every time we upload a video. And of course, do the same on Facebook Live. Any interaction helps us get our message out there if you like the content. Before we get started, I've got to make sure that I mention this. We've got a, a big promo coming up right here. Here it is to the side. Oh, i got a better transparent one here. we got a big promo going on right now at hogsports.com. Okay. Oh, i got an overlap. All right, there it is. Right now, you can get six months for the price of one at hogsports.com. This is our biggest offer ever. Okay. We've never done anything like this before. Well, excuse me. We've done it once before. We did it last year, but we're never going to be able to do it again. From what I'm told from the network, they're not letting anybody else in the 24 seven sports network offer this deal right now. And uh, so we're the only one. And it's largely based on the success that we had with it last year. And the way it breaks down, it's $9.95 for a monthly subscription at hogsports.com, okay? So that's one payment of $9.95 and you're going to get the site for six months. It's 184 days. It breaks down to Five cents a day, 38 cents a week, $1.66 a month is basically the equivalent there. And that's kind of always our deal at Hog Sports. I mean, we once people subscribe, they stay with us. I mean, but it's always difficult sometimes to get people through the door to really understand everything that we offer. And we've got content on the site right now that just shows you what some of our members are saying about the site and and, uh, and why they're subscribed, why you should subscribe and take advantage of this rare offer for the market leader, number one site in the network, uh, number one site uh, for Razorback sports coverage. All right, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, let's see. Uh, we're also going to talk about our new forums uh, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. For those who want to stick around and watch uh, anything about our new forms, you'll be able to do that. But go ahead after the show or right now, take a minute and, and come back later and go sign up at hogsports.com. I think you'll be happy you did. All right. Let's remove that promo. Let's jump into the show here. As I said, again, a lot to unpack from the past week. Uh, Arkansas's fall camp schedule coming up. I've got a printout of it right here. There you can see fall camp schedule. They're basically going to take 24 days for camp and practice every single day but Sundays. That's 20 days of practice coming up. Uh, the whole schedule is at hogsports.com right now. You can read it. Obviously, players report today and then start practice on August 2nd, and then they practice again the 3rd, take Sunday off, and then it's six straight days of practice. There's a five-day acclimation period. So the fifth day of practice, they'll be able to strap on full pads. I believe that's Wednesday, August 7th, and then we would expect a full live-scale scrimmage on, the, on August 10th. Uh, just after that. So a lot going on there with fall camp starting up. A lot of incredible storylines. Uh, I think one of the biggest is obviously the big quarterback battle that's going on. No secret to anybody. Ben Hicks, Nick Starkle, those two guys going to battle it out. Of course, it's going to be interesting to see what K.J. Jefferson does, what kind of impact he might have uh, early on. Is, is he a guy that they use in the RPO game early? You know, I think we probably expect to see him in four games. But I think the, really the narrative has been with these two guys, it's Ben Hicks' experience versus Nick Starkle and his talent. Everybody tells me who's seen him throw over the summer, the guy just launches the ball. You know, this is the first thing you'll note, even him just flicking it around, uh, warming up. And not that Ben Hicks can't throw the ball. I mean, Ben Hicks, from what I'm told, is basically similar to Ty Story in terms of his running ability. Story was a, a, a decent runner, not a great runner, but a decent runner for Arkansas. Um not a very good passer. Ben Hicks is a better passer and uh, and probably knows more about the offense heading in. So big quarterback battle on the horizon. If you want to talk about that, be sure to leave your comments uh, in the comments section. Starting offensive line is set for the first day. One of the interesting things I thought about the offensive line, not that 
not so much about who they said is going to start, but you know Colton Jackson, Austin Capps, Shane Clinton, and Ty Clary at center, Dalton Wagner. But there, there's competition going on. Okay, so you've got Noah Gatlin and Dalton Wagner at right tackle, Myron Cunningham and Colton Jackson at left tackle. You know where does Chaboise and Wana fit in? Kirby Adcock, we haven't talked about him. The health of the offensive line is obviously a huge deal right now versus having like eight guys healthy last year heading into camp and 16 now. So that's a big deal. One of the things I thought was interesting from Tremaine Carroll was talking about the offensive linemen and their body fat percentage. You know, he talked a little bit about last year, but I asked for a little bit of clarification today. But they're looking to get guys between 18 and 22% body fat on the offensive line and from 300 to 315 pounds. I don't know about you guys, but – I don't think I'm 18% body fat. I don't think that's my body fat percentage. So to think about a guy being 300 pounds and 18% body fat and so muscled up, I mean, that's that's a big dude right there, a big, strong guy. So offensive line is going to be an interesting battle. I think it'll be an improvement over last year. Going to be really cool to see how things shake out. You know, do they try Shane Clinton in at center? Do they move Myron Cunningham in at guard? If that happens, does Austin Caps move over to right guard? All kinds of dynamics could happen. But we do know the first group starting out is going to be Dalton Wagner at right tackle, Shane Clinton at right guard, Ty Clary at center, Austin Caps at left guard, and then, of course, Colton Jackson at left tackle. And we know ultimately Myron Cunningham is getting in this starting lineup. We know that. That's going to happen. Big spring ahead for some of these wide receivers, particularly sophomore Michael Woods. I mean, Mike Woods, nobody's talking about Mike Woods. He had 18 catches last year, missed the first couple of games, didn't get started until midseason really, ended up starting seven games for Arkansas. But Mike Woods, I mean, that guy has a chance to be really good, and I've heard some – Really good reports from him over the summer. I mean, he's looking really strong. He's one of those guys that's 6'1", 203, but looks more like, you know, 6'2", or better. You know, he's a, he's, he's a good-looking kid. Um, but he's a guy that people aren't talking about because of Trey Knox, Traylon Burks, Shamar Nash, TQ Jackson, some of those incoming guys. But, you know, he's probably almost certainly going to start for Arkansas this year. So you've got a better version of Mike Woods with these incoming recruits, what I think will be a better offensive line, and two better quarterbacks than they had last year. It's a good start. Good start. And, again, talking about, get, talking about getting back to a bowl game, um, not winning championships next year, taking steps in the right direction. Coylan Jackson's another one. People have asked a lot about Coylan Jackson. And, you know, he, he had the ACL tear as a freshman. I thought he might play as a freshman if he hadn't had that. And then I think it followed him into last year. But he's, a, he's an intriguing guy. Not Again, people kind of forget about you, you know, when, when all these four-star freshmen come in. So he'll be another interesting guy to, uh, to keep an eye on, Coylan Jackson. And, of course, Trey Knox. I mean, when we're talking about the freshman, everybody's talking about Trey Knox. Trey Knox is really wild people in the offseason. You know, he came in, he was listed at 6'5", 218, and now he's listed at 6'5", 205. And True Carroll says he's put on 12 pounds of muscle since he arrived. So he's trimmed up since whenever they – I guess they took his weight in January, and I guess he's he's – trimmed up a lot and added some weight back. So I uh, could see an even better version of Trey Knox. I think the question with him and the other wide receivers is how long before it takes them to really get going. Do they hit a freshman slump period, you know, a time where it just it's all too much, they start getting tired with the rigors of practice and all that stuff. Is that going to happen with Trey Knox? Does he have a chance to break Arkansas's freshman receiving rest with 37 receptions uh, for a true freshman set by Marcus Monk back in 2006, I think. Do that? No, 2004, I think, for Mark. For Monk. Um, you know, it's not just wide receivers. Hudson Henry, obviously high hopes for him. Uh, how long does it take for him to get acclimated in what is expected to be the – or what is always the second hardest position to learn on offense? But O'Grady, um, Henry, that could be a de- – I've said this before. I just envisioned a time where it's going to be O'Grady. They had this stack formation. It would be O'Grady and, uh, and Hudson Henry up on the line of scrimmage and then behind them Trey Knox and Traylon Burks. That could be pretty nasty one day, one day this season because Chino Grady's a senior who I think has NFL potential if he keeps everything clean, doesn't get in any trouble off field. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he ought to catch 50 passes this year. C.J. O'Grady ought to be a, a, a big-time guy for him. By the way, tomorrow me and Danny West are going to draft Razorback teams. We do this every year. So uh, he, he, we'll, we'll alternate picks back and forth, and we'll try to put together our best two teams and then ask everybody what they think, who had the better team. So that will be something fun to do um, tomorrow. Again, offering that big – that big trial, uh, that big offer today, six uh, six months for the price of one. So you, you sign up for a month and you get five additional months free. That takes you all the way up to National Signing Day. So 
you're going to get all of your Razorback coverage all the way up till National Signing Day. That's all your football coverage and really figure out what we're talking about when we say insider information. Because I think there's a lot of reporters out there who say, well, everybody gets the same stuff and um, nobody knows what's going on. I think that's people who say they don't have sources. You know, a lot of times you get real negative reporters who, you know, they don't, they just don't have any sources. That's why they take the negative route uh, on that kind of stuff. But I I would, I would challenge you to come sign up at hogsports.com. It's going to cost you five cents a day, basically the equivalent of five cents a day, nine 95 uh, to get our, our special offer right now. There's a look at it. Promo ends on Tuesday, six months for the price of one. Again, nobody else's, Nobody else in the network is allowed to do this one. And the reason we're allowed to do it is because uh, we had such success with it last year. So, And I'm told this is the last time. This is the last time we'll do this big six for one in August. Um, did it last year with a lot of success. So, And having a lot of success so far. A lot of people taking advantage. Uh, but go check out what everybody is talking about, why they say this is the best place for Razorback coverage. And if you like our content here, then, I mean, that's fantastic. We, we, we love to have you. But... If we hadn't let you down, if we hadn't let you down on drive time, you like the stuff we're doing there, then come check out what we're doing behind uh, VIP. Everything else is just kind of our side job. Hogsports.com is our baby. That's where that's where we are able to do what we want to do there. So uh, really appreciate everybody's support who's been with us, and thank you for trying us out. All right, back on to the show here. Arkansas's fastest players revealed. We haven't talked about this yet because we didn't do Monday show because we had the golf tournament and we had so much to unpack from that. But uh, Jordan Jones and Ladarius Bishop. Now, I have clocked myself Ladarius Bishop at a 4.35. I've clocked him at it. Um, so that's a handheld time, and that was done in 2017 at the Fab 40 in Benton. But I have clocked him at that, and I knew Jordan Jones was extremely fast just based on what the previous staff also said about him. Uh, Jordan Jones – Ladarius Bishop, can those guys make an impact? Really, Jordan Jones, redshirt freshman year, started playing for him, uh, but last year did not play a whole lot, didn't play a whole lot in the spring, was kind of second, third team guy. Uh, is that speed going to translate for him? I mean, if you remember what Dan Enos was saying about the guy in 2017 camp, he was saying that, I mean, he was a budding star, had the potential to be a superstar for him, and really didn't you know do a whole lot that year and didn't do a whole lot last year. So... Yeah, that's uh, where things are with Jordan Jones. Ladarius Bishop running second team at right cornerback behind his former high school teammate, Monteric Brown. Uh, But Ladarius, I know he's fast. I've clocked him. I know that speed is for real. Um, Razorback freshman ready to make an impact in the secondary. Obviously, that's going to be key. They're going to rely on 10 to 12 players in the secondary this year. Arkansas has 12 scholarship secondary players right now. So, Everybody's going to play that's on scholarship this year just to get through the season. Uh, And I think mainly we're talking about also guys like Ladarius Bishop, who's a redshirt freshman, only played in two games, LSU and North Texas last year. And then you're talking about Greg Brooks, Devon McClure, Jalen Catalan. I mean, that's who we're talking about here as far as the freshman players. Now, there are some other young players that Arkansas are going to be counting on, Joe Fouché, Miles Mason, of course, um, and Ladarius Bishop, who I mentioned. And really, Monteric and – uh, Jarquez McClellan are only sophomores, redshirt sophomores, so they, they've been in the system a little bit, but still they've got three more years of eligibility ahead of them. Um, but Greg Brooks and um, and Devin Bush are the two guys I think we're really talking about as far as the freshmen who are going to impact, and, of course, Jalen Catalan. Devin Bush working at backup left cornerback out of the spring. He's expected to push Jarquez McClellan. Greg Brooks working at nickel. He was the backup nickel to Devon McClure in the spring. Devon McClure has moved to weak side linebacker. It's Greg Brooks's job to lose, and I think he'll probably be competing a little bit with Jalen Catalan there. Of course, I can see Jalen Catalan. It depends on what they want to do with him as a freshman, but he could play safety, corner, nickel, do all kinds of things with him. I envision him one day as a honey badger type. Him or Greg Brooks, one of those guys. One of those guys. I, I, I think Arkansas has done a really good job recruiting that position, but it tells you how desperate they are to get defensive backs when they don't have any seniors, they don't have anybody moving out on the roster, and they're going to try to find five cornerback nickelback types in this recruiting class coming up. So that just gives you an idea of where they think they are. They're, they're young. They don't have a whole lot of depth at cornerback right now. They really need to address it in recruiting. Probably need to go after a, an older player uh, from the junior college ranks or grad transfer market also to help them next year. Also on the defensive line, young defensive lineman really making um, some strides in the weight room. You talk about Mateo Soli, who's – I thought he looked super light in the spring. And, I mean, I was thinking, this guy's only playing third down. He's up to 240 pounds. 
I mean, this guy comes off extremely fast off the ball. I've said, don't mess with him too much. Just don't mess with the guy too much, you know. Um, you don't want to pack on too much weight too quick. And then Zach Williams. I've heard some really good things behind the scenes about Zach Williams. He's got a certain toughness about him that they didn't know was there. Um, you know, he, he's got so much potential with his frame. This is a very long-armed, broad-shouldered kid who's got so much potential. I mean, he's only like 230 pounds, so he's got a lot of room to add some weight. So definitely got to watch. Eric Gregory's going to play for him this year. And then I think you're talking about, you know, how does Colin Clay fit in, Torian Carter, Enoch Jackson, Marcus Miller. You talk about a guy who looks, who looks the part, Marcus Miller. Goodness gracious. Older guys, Jonathan Marshall, some real good stuff about him uh, from Tremaine Carroll. We don't always get, you know, who's the fastest, who's the strongest stuff, but we did get that this team. So Marshall, 6'3", 304, bench pressing 450 pounds. What is this power clean? 450, 650 squat, and cleaning 365. Those are impressive numbers with a 33-inch vertical at 305 pounds. That's pretty impressive stuff. Uh, somebody on our board said everybody should be benching 450. I mean, that's – that's, that would be awesome, but, I mean, you look at the NFL Combine, the top bench press numbers among offensive linemen, I mean, probably about, I would assume maybe 25, 27 reps is about 400. I mean, that's middle upper of the uh, in the middle upper pack, and those guys have been in college four or five years. I, I've always thought, you know, if you got all your offensive linemen at least 400 pounds on the bench press, that's you're doing pretty solid. All your starting offensive linemen, uh, if they're 400 pounds, you should feel pretty good about that. Um, I kind of view that as the – the ideal standard there. And I'm not sure every Arkansas offensive lineman is there yet. I mean, especially when you got some guys that are so long armed, you know, like Dalton Wagner. I mean, can he bench 400 with those? I mean, the guy's six nine. You know, it's not an ideal height <laughs> to be benching that much. So, anyway, I thought that was cool about Jonathan Marshall finding out a little bit about who is the freak on, on the Razorbacks. Arkansas football schedules a series with Utah 2026, 2028. It'll be in Salt Lake 2026. So, that's the second time, I guess, in the 2020s that we'll go to Utah. They've got BYU. I can't remember what the dates are for BYU, but um, that'll be fun. I hear good things about Utah. I'll be a little bit older. I'll be pushing 50 years old in 2028, I guess. Man, crazy to think about. Some of y'all be dead. Um, Razorback recruiting notebook while you were sleeping. This is a great stuff by Danny West. So last night, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in Danny, actually. Let me bring his graphic up before we start talking about this. But last night was Arkansas's first opportunity to bring in – or excuse me, Arkansas's first opportunity to issue official scholarship offers. First opportunity. Let's see what Danny West has to say today. Hey, bud. What's up, Danny? Danny, I was. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I was. I've been telling everybody about our big promotion going on, and and just kind of what it breaks down to with the with the flash sale. I mean, it's basically 38 cents a week is what it equals out to. So it's a one time <laughs> payment for 9.95. You're going to get the best Razorback coverage that's out there. Literally nothing to lose to see what everybody's talking about. While we've had, I mean, we've had last year when we did this, we did two promos. We sold thousands of subscriptions off this deal. And uh, we're at a great pace so far. And I just want everybody to to take advantage of it and um, and know that, you know, what we do on drive time and out of bounds, you know, that's – and we appreciate everybody's listening in. But really, this is our baby. This is where, you know, this is where we make our income. And uh, if you like what we do there, be sure to subscribe. So, Danny, last night was the first time that they could offer – official offer scholarships uh, to 2020 recruits. What happened last night while we were sleeping? Well, a, a whole bunch, and it's still going on this morning. My phone's just off the hook today. Um, sorry if you guys can hear any of that. We can't but, hear. We can't hear when your phone rings. <laughs> that's good. That's a good thing because uh, yeah, that thing's buzzing quite a bit. A lot of kids tweeting out their official offers, obviously, mm -hmm. but there were some new ones that went out that I thought were really notable overnight. I mean, once the clock hit twelve oh one at midnight. Buddy, it was rocking. Uh, and some of these new names, I'll just run through them. People can check them out there on the site as well if they want a more in-depth look at these guys. But Tay McWilliams, a guy out of Rosenberg, Texas, Lamar uh, Consolidated High School down there. Tay McWilliams, 61202, currently committed to Baylor 
as a running back, but he could play uh, could play outside linebacker in college. Really intriguing, four four eight speed. I think he also had Texas Tech, Houston, SMU, and a few others there. So he's down around that Houston area, you know, in Rosenberg, and uh, so that would make him a Ron Cooper target, I guess. Um, moving on to Antonio Doyle, uh, four star outside linebacker at in St. Louis. So he's currently committed to uh, Missouri, and uh, he's the teammate of twenty twenty one four star defensive end Travion Ford who was up here this past spring so I wouldn't give him a great shot to crack into that ball game right there with Mm -hmm. uh Antonio but you know it's a notable offer nonetheless and Josh Emmanuel a kid out of Bishop Dunn there in Dallas he's a 2020 linebacker inside linebacker which is really notable when you think about the sweepstakes here for Bryson Eason where Arkansas stands with him what does this new offer mean at an inside linebacker spot? We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, uh, quite a few new offers again today. I think they offered a Juco guy. I'm looking up his name. you got to forgive me here. Uh, Fitzroy Gardner. I think he's at Iowa Western Community College. Um, he came out of the 2018 class, had to take the Juco route. I'm actually about to talk to Fitzroy here in a mm-hmm. minute, so. I uh, wish I'd wish I'd talk to him first before I got on here, so I could tell you what he thinks of it. But we'll uh, we'll find out on the site later today. So, Danny, I, I basically started up things when they announced alcohol sales at Arkansas. Have you have you had a chance to look at that and see what all that entails? All I looked at was uh, is the media involved. Can you get it in the press <laughs> box? And, That'd be nice. <laughs> and I, I just I skipped through it there, and apparently that's not the case. So uh, yeah. no, yeah. I'm hey, that's where it's at, Trey. That's where everybody you know it's is it's 2019, buddy. Mm. Well, think about <laughs> I mean think about what you're competing against, Danny. I mean think about that's what you're it. competing against. You're competing against the guy with the 70 inch. Uh, you know, um, HD, yeah, 4K television <laughs> with a recliner with a cooler underneath it, you know, where he's just grabbing his own beer. You know, I mean, that's tough it's to compete tough. with. you got to make sure that that game experience is something special. I always I always love going to games. I mean, I like watching them on TV, too. I mean, the experience, there's no question that it's gotten better. I but do, Trey, but, you know, uh, you're primarily our travel guy, right? Yeah. You go to all the, the SEC away games. And i got to tell you, there's something nice about sitting at home, mm-hmm. turning on the TV, with a fridge, you know, 10 yards from you, a bathroom 15 yards from you. Yeah, it's, no, it's nice. Hey, it, it's more comfortable, man. I think it's so good. I, it. I think it's good to probably mix it up, though, Danny. I mean, go to some it games, is. stay at home. Because, I mean, think about it. Would you rather watch a concert where you can, you know, get up and go to the bathroom, or would you rather be at the concert, you know? Um, yeah. That's always kind of how I've, I've looked at that. But um, you you got to keep up with it. I mean, stuff's getting – like stuff that is getting crazy, the interactiveness of it. I mean, I love on my Apple TV uh, going to ESPN and bringing up four games at once or split screen and easily toggling in between games. And, I mean, it, they make it's it tough. so easy. And you just can't do that it. when you're at a game, although you do feel more engaged and, you know, living and dying on every play, which is fun. Um, Anthony York um, – oh, excuse me, I just talked about it. Dustin Hoofman, sorry, Anthony. Uh, he was talking about alcohol sales. But Dustin Hoofman says, what players do you expect to make the biggest jump this year from last year? I kind of went over that a little bit earlier, but I, I want to hear your take on it. You know, I'm just sitting here listening to the question. The first guy I thought of was Dorian Gerald, you know, a defensive end, a guy yeah. that came in with a ton of hype. We haven't really talked a whole lot about it. You know, in fact, this past Monday at the at the golf outing, much of the talk was about Jonathan Marshall, yeah. you know, surprisingly. And uh, I don't know. I just feel like Dorian's a guy. He's trimmed up. He's going to come into camp in, in much better shape this time around. I thought he was pretty much, you know, he was he was pretty bad out of shape when he got here. Oh, yeah. He was, so he was 286, years. Danny, and now he's 261. Yeah. He was 286 when he arrived last year. I'll tell you another thing I think is going to benefit – uh, it's going to benefit uh, Dorian – uh, is having McTelvin again to his right. McTelvin, who's going – it's kind of crazy because Dorian's gone from 286 to 261 to play the left end spot, and McTelvin so has gone, going gone from 279 way. to 296, I think, to play yeah. interior. Uh, so, I think, though, having those two guys on the field at the same time, because Dorian Gerald was a big – I mean, we, we kind of thought he was going to Florida because he took a midweek visit to Arkansas. That's never a good sign. So, we kind of thought he was going to Florida. So, Arkansas beat Florida out for him. But you got Mc, uh, McTelvin at defensive tackle. You got Dorian Gerald at defensive end, and then Scooter some behind them. I mean, you talk about a Bermuda Triangle. 
wanting to get back to that kind of thing, that might be your secret right there. So flushing everybody, making everybody think that they ought to go um, to the left side where you got more people or go to the right side where you got more, uh, fewer sure. people and you got your best players over there is kind of what they did with Martrell Spate, Trey Flowers, and Darius Phylon back in the day. So anybody else you think is going to uh, break out? I talked a little bit about Michael Woods. I mean, you know, that's a kind of been a forgotten man with all these incoming freshmen. But uh, anybody else you think? Well, I can tell you there's a lot of guys that you would hope <laughs> that would make that that type of jump. You know, I think about the center the center spot. I always talk about it. But if Ty Clary can just get those snaps down, I think he's a really good player. Yeah. You know, we, we just make so much of the bad snaps because they do throw you off rhythm. They do put you behind the chains in times. And, you know, I, you would love to see him make that type of jump. Noah Gatlin, to me, you know, I know – uh, Dalton Wagner, take nothing away from him. I like the guy. Going into camp, he's penciled in as the starter yeah. at right tackle. It's going to be Gatlin. I just feel like, I I just so. feel like it's going to be Gatlin I think in you're time. Right. And, uh, and so he might be a pick as a breakout type player. Randy Smith says, locked and loaded, got in on the great deal. Thanks for all the hard work, TB. And Danny also, I mean, this jives up perfectly. We didn't necessarily plan it to work out like this, but – we are releasing the new message boards today, and I'll have a video of just how they look on mobile at the end of this, uh, at the end of this podcast. But um, obviously, we'll cut it out for the people listening. But for the people watching, uh, we'll we'll put up a little video at the end there so you can see that. But um, timed up well, man. I think a lot of people. We had, obviously most everybody came with us when we made the switch from Rivals to twenty four seven Sports. But I think some people were kind of waiting around because it was kind of like going from an iPhone eight to an iPhone six with our forums, and now. We're back yeah. up to an iPhone XS Max. So, um, it's a good analogy. And, and yeah. hey, I just want to give a shout out to the people that, that came anyway. Oh, you know? yeah. Uh, no question I mean, about it. Thank you never, so much to those people. We, we never made any bones about it. We weren't big fans of that message board either. But no. it was. we've turned it into the biggest, most active, most insightful, most knowledgeable board. And now – an aesthetic standpoint, functionality standpoint, is checking mm-hmm. every single box. So, man, I can I can't tell you how excited I am to finally get those message boards, and yeah. definitely appreciate twenty four sevens resources taking care of that. Well, they listened to us. I mean, they put they knew how important it was to me to have our community, you know, and that was because that was one of the big things. I mean, when we came over to twenty four seven, we knew that it was going to be. Um, an adjustment, getting everybody to come over and follow us and everything. And, you know, there were certain things we couldn't do to get them over there. But, um, man, more pe- we got more subscribers now than we ever had before at, at Rivals, so that's been good. But um, this message board was one thing that I, I know that we owed people to have the best message board Absolutely. possible. Yep. And, uh, I mean, they've stuck to their word. I mean, 24-7, nobody's saying, man, CBS doesn't care about us. You know, I mean, CS, right. CBS, our parent company, I mean, they, well, they have revamped 95% of the site in the last, what, 15 months since we've been over there. Um, so that's been, that's been great. And obviously these message boards have been kind of the, the elephant in the room thing that we've been waiting on. Um, so appreciate you, Randy Smith, and everybody else that's jumped on so far. I got a question here about the cookout, Danny. I want to ask you about okay. the cookout. Everybody's a little bit concerned that there haven't been just a ton of people jump on in terms of commitments from the cookout. That isn't always the case. I mean, last year they had a lot of people jump on after the cookout. I mentioned Hudson Henry a lot as a guy that went into his senior season but also attended the cookout. So what can you tell us about that? Was it a success? I'm I've, I've of the opinion, though, that you're going to have players not show up who say they are. It's just that for some reason at all these events recently, everybody's shown up. And this one, you know, you had probably four guys that you really wish you had there that didn't. Yeah, and, and we can name them. Bryson Eason, Omari Thomas, Garrett Hayes, and Brian George. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's four four-star guys. Cream of the crop, top of the list in terms of beat them up wanted guys on Arkansas's board. So, yeah, it was unfortunate. But, I, again, I keep telling people, if a five-hour cookout is going to break your class – your class is probably not very good to begin with. You don't have much to sell. <laughs> yeah. Because if you're trying to sell a five hour cookout and a bunch of, you know, pulled pork, shout out Wright's barbecue, but I mean, come on now. Uh, so <laughs> the, the good news is you've had those guys on campus before and yes. you will get them back again. So you're not out of the ball game in terms of commitments. I still like where they're at with Cottrell Wallace. I would say Arkansas is still the team to beat there. Uh, Darren Turner is a guy that I'm, I'm really liking Arkansas's chances for. He's a four-star athlete who could probably play safety for you. So a lot of concerns, I know. 
when Big Red Board comes out every week, what are we doing at safety? That might be your answer. We're yeah. a four-star guy. So, I mean, are you – we're talking about the number 24 class in the country right now after 2-10, and 10, and I say 24th in the country based on 24-7's rankings, not the composite rankings. So mm-hmm. that's, that's a pretty good place to be, you know, uh, past the, the midway point of the class. Now follow it up with a couple more four stars, maybe creep up around that, that top 20 group. And yeah. who in the world can argue with that right now? Just be patient a little bit. Got to go win some games. That would be that would be extraordinary for for the staff right now if they could just go get any type of bowl game. They know it, the fans know it. Now you got to go do it. Yeah, and I don't want to. I don't want to go into the Ole Miss game. I've, got, I've talked about it ad nauseum, <laughs> but it's important. Getting is that, that a if big they can one? Get, it's a big one. If they can get that week oh, two okay. game, it is. Cody Ezell says with KJ putting on some good weight like he has. Do you think they create a goal line package for him like the steamboat boat package? I don't. I don't want to talk about Steamboat or Grave Digger. I, I think that's dead. But, um, you know, with, with Cole Kelly, that was his unique package. But I, I could see them working some RPO game stuff with him. You know, in the first game last year for four snaps, they worked Dalton Hyatt in the RPO. That was the last time we saw him the rest of the year, by the way. But um, I, I could, I could see them working KJ some, man, depending on, you know, how games go, if Arkansas is in control or if they're way behind. And, and again, hopefully, you know, in addition to winning six games, getting back to a bowl game, also, stop getting the crab kicked out of you and uh, and show up and, and don't get blown out in the first half of games. Joey Patrick says no commitment. That was Joey Patrick's question earlier. Anything else going on in recruiting you want to touch on, Danny, while uh, yeah, I pose some, some of these uh, questions? Actually, got some basketball visitors coming in today. I can run through a few names real quick. I'm sorry, tomorrow. Unofficial visitors for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, Quavion, Ager. Uh, Darian Ford from right here in the state. This kid's going to be, I mean, just as good as any that's come out of here. Uh, Javion Guy King, those are your three unofficials for tomorrow. Of course, uh, today they've got uh, they've got one unofficial visitor coming in today, Rondell Walker. He's actually probably arriving about this time. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they're starting to heat up. We talked about it the other day, the August 1st. Uh, calendar uh, roll over it, it rolls into a, a quiet period for the basketball staff so you're going to see quite a few guys coming in over the next several weeks here and uh, looks like they're already popping that off so uh, we know today and tomorrow they've got visitors all throughout next week we've heard from nick smith you know there's a lot of big time guys coming up so um, yeah just a basketball front uh, sure looking good right now, Trey. I mean, yeah. we spend all of our time sitting here talking about the start of fall camp, and, man, these guys are rocking and rolling over there yeah. trying to balance this thing. Michael Musselman on board now. How about that? Good for him, man. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Uh, you know, young guy with a little bit of a little bit of energy about him. Uh, very smart guy. You know, just my dealings with him so far, I think he's extremely sharp. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he comes in with his master's that he uh that he earned this past may so good for him I, i'm all for it yep danny west joining us right now if you if you're not familiar with danny which most of you should be right now if you're a diehard razorback fan best recruiting guy in the business i don't just mean arkansas but um arkansas fans very lucky to have danny west and, and everything that he brings appreciate everything you do danny um Thanks. most of his stuff is vip you know we do we do a good bit of free content. Most of it's stuff out of press conferences. You're going to be able to read other places. But um, I've told people before, I don't think they realize the insider information that you're able to bring. And, you know, a lot of reporters out there say everybody gets the same stuff. And I, <laughs> I just say those, those reporters aren't working hard enough. Um, Chris Mc, <laughs> McFerrin says, what's the TV schedule look like? Uh, free broadcast versus pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. So, okay, we'll just go. Uh, nobody's doing pay-per-view for – uh, football every game's on television so the first game is at three o'clock on the 31st is that right or is it the first right. 31st. 31st so the second game is also is, the second game is at 6 30 in oxford against Ole miss i guess that'll be ES, espn the third game is, or no excuse me it's all, all three of the first games are sec networks the third game is at three o'clock also okay so that's the only ones that have been scheduled everything else will be scheduled 12 days out from the game unless it, cbs exercises a six-day option to uh, to hold off and, and make their selection. And then the last game of the season against Missouri and Little Rock is at 1.30 Friday after Thanksgiving. 
So and that's it's a, already set it for is already CBS. Set. Yes, and it's set for CBS already. Uh, Cody Adams says, do you think that having two bye weeks is going to help our guys out as far as not burning out so quickly? I think the bye week's set up. I think they break up the schedule well. I think, uh, I think they got two good bye weeks this year. Preston Roy says, alcohol isn't needed at the games. Too many issues will arise. I mean, the same thing could be said at a bar. You know, should you allow alcohol at a bar? You know, is there going to be a fight every time somebody has a drink of alcohol? Should alcohol be allowed in your home? I mean, you could kind of go down everything. I mean, most of the people I knew, I don't know about you, Danny, I haven't been to a game by myself in a while, but most people I knew snuck alcohol in. I got a friend, I got a friend in college who put two bags of bourbon. He was wearing a white shirt, white button down shirt, and he put two bag, Ziploc bags of bourbon underneath his arms and, and duct taped them around his arms. And then when he got in the crowd, when he got in the crowd, everybody's bumping into you and he squishes and bourbon just comes out of his armpits and he's so, he's so deep bourbon. So not to, that was a creative idea that did not work out like he thought it would be. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's like, I don't know, they, they've allowed alcohol beer sales in the club sections. You know, they can't, they can't allow it to uh, the peons down in the, in the stands or something. I mean, come on. Come on. Baseball games. I mean, you tell me people aren't taking alcohol to baseball games. <laughs> it's a pretty good environment, too, I yeah. might add. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the best in the country right now. Yeah. So, I mean, it, there's something to be said for it. Dustin Hoofman says y'all do a great job and put out a lot of information in a quick amount of time. I've always always tried to do that. Always try to make sure we get a lot out in a short amount of time. I think that's that what makes uh, good good entertaining media. How do y'all feel about the linebacker option? Thanks both. Um, well, I mean, Scooter Harris, I mean, we hear all this talk about not wanting to play the linebackers more than 70% of the snaps, but, or, I mean, Scooter's playing 90%. I did the math last year. He played 93% of the snaps. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how Devon McClure steps in. I hear a lot of good things about Zach Zemos. He's going to surprise us with his athleticism. He is a freshman. I mean, the secret with a freshman is you learn some of the defense and learn how to do it well. You don't, you know, know – everything about the defense and you're going to make mistakes sure. as a freshman but people tell me i mean he is super athletic at 6'4 211 long rangey just needs to add some more weight but um you know hayden henry's going to come in there and push for some time you know he's got some playing experience at sam he wasn't there in the spring so kind of people have forgotten about him so i mean there's some guys that you know we'll see we'll see what andrew parker does and stuff but i mean really you got you got scooter harris and then probably bumper pool and then maybe everybody else and you know i don't know there's some unknowns in there what do you yeah, think? I'm with you on that, uh, Trey. Uh, Bumper to me is the guy. You know, you've got to have him step up. I think he, uh, I think he missed two games last year. He still had around 30 tackles or so, but I think he's got big play potential. You know, you saw mm-hmm. what he did in the uh, the season opener there. I think he had that fumble return there, but um, even the Vanderbilt game, he had 10, 11 tackles. You know, uh, he makes plays. I think he's a very heady player. So I'm curious to see what kind of stride he makes. Grant Morgan, of course, is always a solid, savvy veteran guy mm-hmm. behind Scooter there. So the bottom line is somebody's got to step up and help Scooter mm-hmm. because, I mean, you talk about knock on wood that he doesn't – no, you need to bang on the wood here yeah. <laughs> because, exactly. I mean, you got to keep that guy healthy. I yeah. mean, you can't afford anything. Oh, man, don't even talk Lord. about that, Danny. I know it, I know it, but it's, it's got to be talked about. Somebody's got to step up. Yep. Yep, you're right. Absolutely right, Danny. Danny, you want to say anything else to our people out there that are listening, that people that, um, you know, listen to us on radio, listen to the podcast and watch the show, people that read the free content, um, just about what we're offering right now at Hog Sports and just the, the rare and significance of it? Well, you, you can't beat it. You know, for as long as I've been with you, this is by far the best promotion that we've ever run. And I think this is our second time around here mm-hmm. running this one. And, uh, and it's it's timely you know when you talk about the message boards and what they're what they're doing with those things for us at the moment the start of the season we just talked about eric musselman bringing in all these recruits if you want to keep up with that but go the extra mile we're kind of the extra mile yeah. people you know we we don't just want to tell you what has happened we want to tell you what's about to happen that's the so secret if yep if you're into that sort of thing come give us a shot you're not you're not out much of anything for trying this thing out here. So you might want to go with us and, and just give it a shot. I guarantee you we're going to work tirelessly to, to prove ourselves right and uh, keep delivering a great product. When you yeah. think about the message boards, Trey, this promo, 
new statewide radio show. What we're doing here with Hog Sports Live, our um, our connections there with 1037 The Buzz, and who knows, Betty, I might have something up my sleeve coming out yep. pretty soon. We'll yep. see. I, I've, so, I've heard you know, whispers. Yep. <laughs> yeah, heard rumors. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just keep adding to the arsenal. We just want to go above and beyond for the people that trust us, because without those people, we wouldn't be. We wouldn't Absolutely. be sitting here talking about the Razorbacks. So I just want to say thank you to everybody for, for giving us a shot. Yeah, and that's the bottom line, Danny. I mean, we're just we're not going to let people outwork us. I mean, we're gonna that's we're gonna put out the best product that there is, and if somebody's pushing us, then we're gonna push harder. That's just that's just how it is. I mean, it's how it's been for a decade, I guess, with us, and, and we've been the largest subscription site, um, Razorback subscription site out there for for a decade now so um and bigger and stronger than ever and keep trying to come up with new innovative things and and now we've got the people behind us at 24 7 sports that want to support us they did not want to do the promo danny they're like well what do you think about doing a three for one i was like no we got to do on the table we got to do the six for one promo it works we want people in the door and they're like well what about um you know we want to make sure people stay around for signing day and stuff and it's like they're gonna they're gonna read our content they're going to get hooked where, you know, people, that's once sick. they come in the door, the people stick around. I mean, that's the bottom that's line. And that's why we offer promos like this. I mean, most people come in on a promo and we certainly thank our subscribers uh, for all of that. So Danny, any last words before I oh, let man. you go? I'm just, uh, I've got to get to work and catch yep. up on all these new offers. So it's going to be a busy day on the site today. It's a yep. good time to join. Fall camp starts tomorrow. Big time stuff coming up. Appreciate you, Danny. All right, bud. All right. Like Danny said, that's the promo. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody. Let me see if i got any last questions here. Oh, we've got a few questions built up. We'll, we'll, we'll answer a couple more questions. Uh, what's all included with the pack? It says Bryson Moore. So you're going to get access to all of our VIP content, all of our VIP content, uh, our crystal ball feature, so where we're projecting recruits to go, uh, all of Danny West's inside information. The message board is extremely underrated. Uh, source for information that's where we break a lot of news uh we don't you know that doesn't get out there you're, you're usually going to break you know find stuff out first i mean if you go back and look at our history bryson some of the things we broke we told you chad morris was going to be hired before anybody else we broke that news we broke uh the chad uh, that mike anderson is going to be fired we broke that uh, eric musselman was the answer and the same thing with recruiting i mean Dan, nobody covers recruiting like Danny West. I mean, he's got more sources, more inside access than anybody out there, and that is bottom line worth, worth the price of admission. Almost all of Danny's content is VIP. Okay, we do some free stuff, but some of the stuff that I do from a analytical standpoint, a more research stuff, and then, you know, that stuff is more VIP. So access to the message boards, all of our videos without advertisements and stuff in front of them, um, full player pages, crystal ball features, um, there's, there's a lot, and we're always looking to push and add more, transfer portal, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the transfer portal's crazy. The transfer portal's a lot of fun. And, then, again, that's one reason we came over to 24-7. They're, they're so forward-thinking about stuff. They just stay on top of it. Transfer portal comes out, and then we have our own transfer portal. Coaches are the only people are supposed to access that, and now we have that also. Chris McFerrin says, I live in Oklahoma. Where can I watch the games online? Uh, you can watch it on ESPN. Dustin Hoofman or CBS? Uh, Dustin Hoofman says, watch ESPN app. There you, there's your answer. Bryson Moore says, buying it now. Thanks for the info, Trey. Appreciate you, Bryson. Appreciate everybody for subscribing to hogsports.com. Take advantage of this offer. Uh, I'm going to run – I'm going to run a video at the end of this here uh, for the people that are, are watching. Uh, not for the people listening. We'll cut it out. But for the people watching, we're going to, I'm going to run this video about the new forums. All right. So I'll come back. I want to thank everybody for listening. Thank you for subscribing. If, you, if you're, you're considering it, uh, go ahead and jump on there now. Here's the new forums. Okay, let's take a look at the mobile version of the site. Okay, it's very mobile forward. Most of our traffic comes from mobile users, so we want to make sure the functionality is perfect. Now, as you can see, very clean look. These threads here are grayed out more than these threads, okay? And there's a distinguishing line that says recent topics. So these are the pin threads, as you can see by the push pin there, and these are the normal topics here. If you see a line beside a post, that just means that's a post that you have posted in, okay? You've had, you have a reply, or you're the original poster in that one. If you see a number there, like there's a one there, and I've been clicking on a lot of these, there's a three there. Those are called gleams, okay? So all that means is, since you've last looked at this thread, there have been three replies. So it's going to take me right here. It's another distinguishing line. It says new messages. I've already read these, and these are the messages that I have not read yet, okay? 
Another cool feature, when I hit back to topics, it's gonna take me to where I left off. Not to the top of the board, but to where I left off, so I don't have to go back and try to find my place again. So that's a really cool feature. Uh, you can easily go back to the top of the board. You're all the way at the bottom. You wanna to go to the top of the board, boom, you're back at the top. All right, let's see if we can find a, something to post in here. All right, here's a top 10 thresh, freshman thread. You can easily just hit reply right there. Post your comment and hit reply and boom, you're done like that. If you want to quote reply, then you hit quote, okay? And when this shows up for a user, there's an option to expand it by hitting show more or show less. So if you want to post a reply here, I can add a photo if I want. I've got photos that I've stored in there, okay? I can add a GIF. We have all this stuff right here. That's dumb, okay, whatever. And if I hit post, then I get a notification, all right? And if I click it, it's gonna take me to where I responded, okay? And that's the case with if somebody replies to a post that you made, if somebody posts a new thread while you're on the forum, if somebody likes your post, then you're gonna be able to get notified. And in 2.0, we're actually gonna have more notifications expanded where you'll be able to put like at Trey Biddy and I'll be notified and I can easily go in and answer your questions. Upvotes and downvotes remain. The difference is when you upvote somebody or downvote, people can see who did it, okay? You, there's transparency now. It's not just who, who downvoted me. And I think that'll cut down on things like trolling and stuff. Again, here's back to the top button right here. And this also floats here, a quick reply button, so you can easily quickly reply if you want to. Okay, so I wanna show you real quick how to embed a tweet, instant embed. You just copy the link. Share tweet via copy link. Okay. Tweet. Paste. Post. There it is. Same deal with YouTube also. So you go to YouTube. Wet pop tart, sure. YouTune. <laughs> I'm kind of typing at a weird angle. There it is. Delete. People are wondering what the heck's going on. There it is. A lot of cool functions here with the new board. Really pleased. They've really listened to what I said, my feedback based on what you guys wanted. So that's really cool. I'll say this also, again, we're in beta, so this is, this is not the 1.0 version. We're just days away from releasing it though to everybody. There are, I think, over 8,000 people in the network right now that are, that are on the forums. A lot of people have figured out how to get to them and we're just days away from releasing them. And then after that, we will flip everybody over who hasn't gone to the new boards. Again, here's a five things we learned story. Now, when you click on this, again, it took me to where I left off. Eventually, this is just going to take you to the story. You're just going to see the whole story right there. You're not going to have to click that again to go to the story. I'm really liking the way they work right now. I'm really pleased with what they've done here. So functionality is great, easy to read, easy on the eyes, which I think is important. Great presentation, great functionality so far. So, so far, so good. Hope you guys are pleased. And again, sorry for the long wait, but we wanted to get these right. It was very important that we have a great community. And I know a lot of people were waiting for this to come out. So... Great opportunity to take advantage, and the new forums will be here shortly. All right, everybody. Exciting times, exciting times at hogsports.com. I don't have to tell you again, use this promo. Take advantage. You're not going to get a better deal. We've never offered a better deal. You're not going to get a better deal. So sign up at hogsports.com. So for Danny West, this has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and that's the show.